All right, first of all, Catherine, I am so excited that you are my first guest. I don't know if you knew that, but you were my guinea pig. Oh, I didn't know that. That's exciting. Yes, I'm, I'm just so excited that you said yes and, and you were excited to come on because this is something I'm really passionate about. You know what I do for my job and you know a little bit about my personal life. So I'm just super excited to talk to someone who was a coach's wife for years and years and years. Right. Well, that's exciting. And it's exciting that you're getting to mix your job with the coaching profession. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, we're going to get all into I know that you did that and you found a way to get involved in Coach Rick's life as well and his profession. But let's go back to the very beginning because uh, you met him while you guys were well, while you were in college and Coach Rick was right. a grad assistant. So tell me a little bit about the story of how you guys met. So it was actually a blind date which worked out, but we, when we had the date, we were actually like best friends. We became best friends for a while. So, um, and so he likes to tease and say, he told me everything, not thinking <laughs> that it would mean anything, but now he's glad because when his buddies get together with them, especially when we were down in Miami, he'd said, you can say anything because she knows it all. So, oh my but, gosh. <laughs> So, okay. So it was a blind date. Were you nervous? Did you, did you know anything about him going into the blind date? I knew he was a grad assistant, which I had no clue what that meant. Now, that you time. know, now, you know what a grad assistant means. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. But no, I didn't know what that meant. I just knew he was a, a young coach and he wanted to meet a nice girl. And my friend said I was nice. So I said, okay, well, that's yeah. good. <laughs> right. So did so, he say you were nice after the date? You guys became friends. You didn't date right away. Right. Yes. We, well, yeah, he, <laughs> I mean, he thought he wasn't ready necessarily to just jump right in. Right. Um, so, and neither was I, I was okay. I had just come off an engagement and that had broken up. So, you know, we just started out being good friends. We, I mean, we spent a ton of time together. It was like we were dating, but you know, but we were, we were best friends. But the Best Friend Foundation is the best way to start it, too. I mean, you guys had that foundation from the beginning, which obviously turned into, you know, a very long marriage that you guys are still in right now. Yes, yes. And he had always said, and I knew this because he told me this, he would never say he loved somebody unless he was going to marry them. Ah. So it took him a year from when we met, and he, then he said he loved me. And then I was like, wow. And, so then you asked, and, then we, and then we got married within three months. So. Oh my gosh. Okay. So he says that he loves you <laughs> and then you guys go off and get married three months later? Yeah. I wow. mean, you know, we, we'd already, <laughs> I don't know. We were just, we were best friends. So we were already ready. I mean, I was ready. I knew I would marry him early on. Just when somebody shares their heart with you and you see their heart, I was like, oh gosh, this guy is amazing. So you know, I knew that if he ever did, you know, fall in love with me, I was, I was good to go. So here we are. The rest is history. I love that so much. So now we know that <laughs> coach Rick, it, all it took was saying, I love you. And you were like, all right, let's go. Yeah. Let's go to the altar three months later. Right. <laughs> That's right. So now, okay. So you guys started dating whenever he was a grad assistant, which mm -hmm. those of us that have been in relationships with grad assistant know the grind it is, wow. it, it's a lot. Did that really deter you? You were like, I don't, I don't know if I can do this. This is a lot. You know, I think that, um, my mom and my dad instilled, and it's maybe not such a good thing, but independence in me. And so I was okay. Um, with that part of it, I think that 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 you need a part of that. You don't need to be so independent that you don't need him. Right. But you need to, in coaching for coaches wives, you need to be independent enough that you don't need him. <laughs> yeah, I, Does that you make know, sense? I, of course, I, because that's what I think the common misconception is, is that people don't really understand what it's, what it's like to be one of us, right? And you really are by yourself the majority of the year. And right. whenever you guys first started getting into, you know, grad assistants, obviously very different than a coach. And really, I feel like it's a glorified intern when you're a grad assistant and you're probably For working sure. oftentimes more hard than you would be as a coach. You know, you're doing a lot of little things every single hour of the day. 
But right. when you started to figure out that, you know, you were going to be by yourself a majority of the time, was that pretty difficult for you? So uh, what happened is, is Mark became a volunteer. They don't have that anymore. He became volunteer status. So he did get paid by the booster club. Um, and he, and he worked as a volunteer, but, but he, he was a coach, coach Bowden, when Mark came in as a GA coach Bowden gave him the quarterback. So he was a little bit different than most GAs from the get go. So when he was a volunteer coach, he was coaching the quarterbacks. The difference is he was not recruiting. Yep. So when we entered the world and he got his first full-time job, it was actually at East Carolina University. And we were there for one year with Bill and Sandy Lewis. And he went away recruiting. So he would be gone all week recruiting. Then he would come in on Friday and he'd maybe come home and change clothes and stuff like that maybe not and go straight back to the office because they had a recruiting weekend. So then he was up there all weekend and see when he was a GA and he was um, a volunteer, he never traveled. So while the coaches were on the road traveling during the week, the GAs had a little bit during recruiting season, they had a little bit of time. So I was not used to I had to adjust to the, oh my gosh, you mean you're not home for the weekend? You're, <laughs> you're home, but you're not. You're at the office because now we're entertaining recruits and their parents and, and that whole deal. So I had to adjust to that. But you know, you, you have choices. I mean, just like w even with the coronavirus, we have a choice how we're going to deal with it. We can choose to be, woe is me, so sad, life is terrible. Or you can choose to say, you know what, I'm going to find the positives in this. I'm going to look for the good things. And that's kind of what you have to do because in, it, in the world of coaching, everything is changing. They change the rules. Everything is, you know, just evolving. And so you have to be able to roll with the punches and you have, you have choices to make consistently every day. Oh yeah. And I feel like there are so many positives, obviously, to being a coach's wife or to being a coach in general. Uh, there's so many things that I think is so fun about being a part of it that people don't get to experience. And I, I don't take that for granted at all. And for you, you talk about how he's, how he's not home. For me, the most difficult part is trying to explain that to people that don't get it, whether it be my friends or my family. They're like, what do you mean? They're not playing football right now. So what does he have to do? That's been the most <laughs> difficult thing for me is like, what do you mean? He's working 365 days a year. So in those hey. small moments where you guys did have some downtime, what was your favorite thing to do? Oh, gosh. I'm <laughs> Everything? Think. I'm looking at him. I'm like, what was our favorite thing to what do? What did we do? Yeah, right. So, well, we, we. Oh yeah, we, we would eat pizza and go to TCBY. We did do that. We'd oh, okay. Was that, TCBY. was that like a every once in a while thing? Did you guys make that a tradition? Uh, no, well, Thursday nights became pizza night because that was the one night during the season he would come home early and, and the kids and us, we would have pizza with him that night. But um, so I can't remember, gosh, it's been 34 <laughs> years. So I'm trying to think back to those days. I know that when we got married, we were trying to get pregnant, but it did take us three years to get pregnant. Okay. So, and um, that turned out to be good. Uh, Mark is five years older than me. So that was- Same as me and, and he, Levi, look at that. Oh, that's cool. I like yeah. that because he's a little bit more mature and that was, that works. <laughs> that worked for me. I yeah, needed that. That that's, that's what I was saying. <laughs> Whenever I met him, I was like, okay, you're five years older than me. I know that men mature a lot more slowly than women do. So I was on board. <laughs> yeah. Right. So anyways, but yeah, I can't, I can't remember exactly what we would do. I know we had good friends and we would hang out with them and their kids a lot. And with family, we, we both have, well, my family's in Tallahassee. So we had family to hang around with as well. So, so that, that was probably really good for you whenever he got the job at Florida state and he was able to be there around coach Bowden. And obviously that was life-changing for, for Mark, but for you right. to have your family there, that had to have been great for as long as you guys were in Tallahassee. Oh, it was awesome because I had 
babysitters and I had, we had family gatherings. We had, I just had a ton of support that was, I, we, you know, at FSU, the coaches wives, we loved, we, we had like a very unique bond, I think. And, um, it was very hard to, to, for us to leave and, and to leave those wives, that group of wives, because we would sit, the wives would sit in a box together, just the wives, just the way the ticket was at Florida State. That's how you did it. And um, so we just, I don't know, we just formed a very special bond. So it was hard to leave Florida State. But so I enjoyed the wives and I had so much fun with them. But then it was nice to have my family as well and friends just to fall back on. So that it wasn't always about football. What was different about those Florida State wives that made you guys so close, you think? Well, I think that we, ha- we watched the games together, all the games together. We were together. So... so it was different at Georgia? You guys didn't all sit together? How, how did that work at Georgia? So at Georgia, I had a 25-seater box and then I had a 10-seater box. But... I invited, I gave the wives a ticket to the 25 seat. The 10 seater box was really too small. It would have been, they wouldn't have had good seats. So it was too small to put the wives in there. So I gave them a ticket in the 25 seater box, but then I had other tickets. So I invited family and stuff. And what I found out is a lot of those wives, they would take their kids to the game. See, our kids didn't go to the game until they were ready to sit and watch the game. You didn't need you. You didn't need to be there. We weren't going to give you a ticket unless you were ready to sit and watch the game. But the wives at Georgia, they wanted to bring their kids, you know, from toddler <laughs> babies on up. And I, I was like, oh wow! And at Georgia, they got excellent seats. They got like I think they were on the forty to the forty-five yard oh, line wow. up underneath, you know, the first thing. So their seats were incredible. So they had great seats and they liked to take their children now some of the wives the older ones or some that didn't have family they would come and sit in the box okay there with me so so could you could you hear fans when you were in the box I don't know where the box was at Tallahassee or in Athens where you guys were could you hear them at all because for me I know that it's very weird for me because this is obviously my job. But then when I go to Levi's uh-huh. games and I have to sit there and listen to people, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, it's hard for me right. to sit and listen through all of that. Could you hear them at all? Um, yes, we could. I could hear them. So you couldn't, I don't know. I, I would always um, pray for a hedge of protection. Don't let me hear <laughs> what I don't need to hear. And I never right. did. Well, I did as water girl, but I never did as, um, in just the stands. And so when we traveled to away games, you were in the stands with everybody. A lot different. So yeah, a lot different, but usually they sit the coaches families together, Yep. but it, you know, and people could get ugly, but I didn't, I don't know. I just choose to ignore them because they don't know who I am. They don't, you know, nine times out of 10, they really don't know what they're talking about. Yes. I, but I will say this <laughs> one time, there is one time though, I will admit when I, I was young and we were at Florida state and one of the players, I don't even remember fumbled the football. And this guy had been just going on and on about coach Bowden and the coaches all game long. And then he was yelling cause the kid fumbled the ball. And I finally turned around. I looked at him. I said, no. <laughs> I said, Oh, I'm going to have to ask the Lord for forgiveness for this. But I said, you, I said, you idiot. Coach Bowden told him to fumble the football. That was part of the plan. Oh my God. And then he just kind of looked at me like, Oh yeah, I guess, you know, and I was just like, and I better turn around and sat down. He was quiet the rest of the game. So but, he didn't say anything back to you. You just put him in his place and that was that. No. Yeah. I mean, I just think he realized that what he was saying was like, yeah the kid doesn't want to fumble the football the coat none of the coaches wanting to fumble the football I mean it was just those kind of statements that he was making that I'm like (laughs) oh my gosh anyway so did did you go home and did you tell Mark that immediately like you'll never believe what I did in the stands today did you do that 
He probably, I don't know. It depends. If we won, I probably did. If we lost, I probably didn't. <laughs> okay. That, you know, that brings up a good point for me because, um, you know, everybody handles wins and losses differently. Wins, it's a little bit easier to navigate when you're dealing with someone who's on top of everything and you're really excited you've won. But uh, it's a little bit different when, when they're losing. What did you do with him? Did you approach it in any way? Did you just kind of figure out as you went along, he likes to be left alone? How did that work? Yeah, you just got to kind of follow their lead and see what they, you know, I'd listened, you know, you could listen when he was ready to talk. Um, win or lose, he would watch the game over again once he got home. So every time, every time. So, and sometimes I would stay up, and, but sometimes I would go to bed. I was exhausted. That's exhausted cheering. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> it takes a lot out of a girl. Well, listen, according to what you just told me, you did a lot in the stands, whether it was good <laughs> or yelling at somebody okay. else. So I know you were tired when you got home. That's right. So, but yeah, you just have to figure out, you know, because every, every coach is different too, you know, so you just have to kind of pay attention to yours and study them and just see what, you know, try different things and, you know, see, but give them, but definitely give them space because they have to work through it. Nobody likes to fail, but men don't like to fail. So Did you, know, you, you got to let them. Did you ever feel like maybe, you know, there was a time or two like, oh man, I shouldn't have brought that up or I shouldn't have said that? Oh, sure. Oh yeah. There's plenty of times. I can't necessarily <laughs> recall them, but I can remember just by the look on his face going, oh man, how am I going to backpedal that one? So. <laughs> <laughs> but you got out of it. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's very forgiving. Well, that's good. And I have, yeah. I have heard, I don't know Mark, but I know that he is very, very nice. And that's what everybody says. Yeah. So I'm sure he's the same with you as well. Um, yeah. You know, that, that brings me to a good point of the fact that winning is obviously so much fun in college football. And mm -hmm. I'm sure your kids were always really excited whenever dad would win and the team would win wherever you guys were. Um, what was it like celebrating at home with the family whenever things were going really well for you guys? It was fun. A lot of times we had recruits at the house after the game um, and the, and the family would be over because we'd have food and stuff. So it was uh, it always seemed to be a lot of people. And it was only when we went to away games and then we had to travel back that there wasn't, you know, anybody there and the kids would see them on Sunday morning. But, um, but when we were at home and had home games, the house was usually full with recruits and, and the kids and food and fun. So it was just a very festive um, activity. And we, we loved the early games yeah. because then oh, yeah. you could go home and watch everybody else, right? There's some yeah. good games. But if you had to play a late game, those, those days are long. So were your kids just as passionate? I know that your oldest has dabbled in coaching a little bit, but were your kids as passionate about football as everybody else, his dad and mom? Oh, yeah, they all loved the football. They, you know, that's the one thing about it is that your family can be involved in, your, in what your husband does, and even you, because you're talking about sports. So yeah. it's, it's kind of cool. So they can, our kids went to practices, so they got to know the players. As they got older, that became a little bit harder only because they had their activities that they were doing. Sure. And so we couldn't always go to practice. But they, when they were little, they loved going to practice. They loved playing. They loved being around the, the offices. Um, at Florida State with Coach Bowden, they would have a family night. And so once a week during the season, we would go up there and we would eat dinner and, and the kids, all the coaches, kids would run around and play and have a great time. And we, we maintained that at Georgia and at Miami. So they, they, you know, knew the other coaches, kids, they had fun, they played, they just, you know, if they were boys, they could go in the locker room, they could be ball boys, they could do things like that. We tried our daughter out at the water table she was not into working oh she didn't so want to she, do it no no she just I think she was enjoying being on the sideline <laughs> so she got fired oh no who fired who had to fire her? me oh no. I did. yeah because you were you were <laughs> that was your job yeah that was 
that was my job. So anyway, <laughs> he was telling me something. I don't know where he's telling me because I have a baby. What? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yes, our, our daughter especially, but the kids love the bowl games. The wives and the oh, kids yeah. have more fun at the bowl games than anybody because we're oh, just there to play. Yep. Yeah. It's so, just fun. Mm -hmm. And so you're hanging out with those kids and I don't know, you just become pretty close with the coaches' kids and, and they had a good time. They loved it. They was still any, love it. Was there any players um, – We'll, we'll ask specifically for Georgia since I'm in Atlanta that really took an interest in, in your kids and, you know, always said, Hey, or, or we're pretty involved with your kids whenever they were at practices and stuff. Is there anyone that you kind of remember? So everybody was always really very nice um, to the kids. Um, David Pollock, my daughter thought she's going to marry him. Really? So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so she You're still talks. David know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he knows. Oh, he, he loves does. Anya. Yes, he Love knows that. and he loves Anya. Yes. But um, yeah, she'll still say to this day, I just, I'm like, he is married to Lindsay. <laughs> Leave that boy alone. Anyways, so. <laughs> She's just dreaming, I, you know. I'm like, Anya, he has two kids. Let's <laughs> go. Anyways. But yeah, so David Pollock, Chris Conley loved to play the piano. So he kind of bonded with our son, David who's the musician in Nashville. And so, you know, there, I mean, there's Aaron. I think Anya liked Aaron Murray too, didn't she? Yeah, she did like. She yeah, likes Anya the tall, dark-headed boys. That's what she yeah, liked. Yeah, yeah. She kind of <laughs> kept, she kind of, she kind of, and she was an easy one. She's a fun one. She's an easy one for them to, you know, pick on and love. But they all, you know, all the players were always nice. So I can't really. And for you, you know, you're trying to be as involved as you can. You're obviously not going to know every single player on the roster because that's pretty much impossible when you're not there every single day. Um, but there are guys that I'm sure that you connected with over the years. Um, what was that like for you? I mean, how did you approach trying to make a connection with different players? So it was easier when Mark was the quarterback coach. Okay. Because Smaller that group. was, yeah the group that I could connect with. I'd make them cookies. Okay. I'd bring them ices. I would, you know, at, and when we were at Florida state, Casey Weldon was actually married and had a little girl named Kendall. And she was just, I'm not sure. I don't think she was a whole year older than John, but they were great buddies. So when Mark was coaching the quarterbacks, I was closer to the quarterbacks. Um, over the years, but then, and, and, the, and we were going to practice a lot because the kids were young. So I did know more of the players, but then once Mark became the head coach, it was like, Oh, well, <laughs> got a few more to doing? focus on. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Help. Right. Yes. Yes. That was a lot harder. So was that anyway. when you made the choice to be the water girl whenever he was a head coach or no, you no? Did you start in Georgia? So, yes, I did. Okay. So I, what happened in Georgia was that I could go to, I could travel to all the games. At that time, only the head coach's wife could fly. So I could fly, but the other coach's wives couldn't. Now they would travel to a lot of the games because Georgia is very centrally located. So you could, and they would take their kids and travel. So it was good. But there were a couple of games where I was by myself. And I remember Barbara Dooley was so sweet. She took me, she invited me to go sit in their box. And I went in there for about five minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> it was at Ole Miss. And it was when, who was, who's the Manning boy? Uh, Eli. Oh, Eli. Yeah, Eli. Eli Manning, yes. So they were really good, right? With right. Coach Cutcliffe and Eli. So it was a nerve wracker. So I think I lasted five minutes in there because, you know, the president's in there. Oh, no. Stoolies in there, everybody. And I just didn't want, I didn't want anybody to say anything. And for me to, if they wanted to say something, I wanted them to say it. I just didn't want to hear it. So <laughs> I was like, I'm out. So Barbara oh went with me and we stood like in the end zone, like at the hedges. And Barbara stood there with me the whole rest of the game. Wow. And when I was, when I was down there, I was just watching, you know, the sideline. And I was like, I could, I could stand behind that little table and do water. And then 
nobody has to worry about me. Nobody has to babysit me. Nobody has to, I'm good. I'll just, and then I'll work and then I'll, I'll, I'll be doing something. I'll be doing something for the boys, you know? So I asked Mark and Mark's like, well, it's okay with me, but it's not my decision. That's Ron Corson's decision. You have to ask him. So I was like, oh, so I asked Ron Corson. So he made you trainer. ask. He didn't he ask, made he made ask. you. No, he made me ask. And so I asked Ron Corson, I said, I said, Mark says it's okay, but it has to be okay with you. And I said, I'll just stay behind that table. I promise I'll stay behind the table. I'm not going to try to do anything else. I'm just going to stay behind the table and I'm just going to serve water. And he said, that'd be great. He said, we could use extra hands. I so love that. yeah, he put me to work. So how long did how that last? Because I, I know that you took it to Miami too. You took it all the way until yeah. the end, right? From that point on. Yeah. Uh huh. From 2005 until, or maybe 2004. I think it was 2004 until 2018. So, seemed longer than that. I did miss a few games in there at some point because our son John was playing at Mars Hill. Okay. And so I always felt like a parent needed to be at his game, you know. So I would go to John's game. So there were a few years in there that I was at Mars Hill and not on the sideline with Georgia, but. And as far as I know, in, in some of the interviews and things that I've seen over the years and what you did, you uh, took your job very seriously. <laughs> well, there was one point I got to have a little bit of fun with it. So oh. we were, we were going down, we were going to play the, the Gators and, you know, we always play them around um, Halloween. Well, yeah. that was when Tebow was there. So it was Powerade, right? So you only had, you only had a few colors. Yellow was the main color. That's what they served. That's what the equipment people liked because the other colors stained the uniforms and things like that. But I was able to talk Ron into letting me make kryptonite. I said, <laughs> if I make it green, I can give it to him and tell him it's kryptonite. Oh my God. So they gosh. can take Superman down over there. That's so hilarious. we did. Well, the boys loved it and we won the game. Maybe it's so, because of your power raid. No, I don't think so. I but, think so. I'm going to tell everyone that <laughs> it was because of Catherine's power raid that they won that year. <laughs> I don't think the boys and the coaches will appreciate that. <laughs> but they, but because we won, then the next game is when we played Auburn. And we did the blackout and I knew Mark had told me that we were doing all black. So I knew that they were going to have the black jerseys and everything. So I, I, and Ron let me do it again. I didn't ask him. I just said, can I keep doing colors? And he's like, yeah. So I made blackout juice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. So those, those are like my two favorite ones. And you couldn't really do much else because the only colors you had, your base was the yellow. That right. was the main color. And then you'd have little containers that had blue and red. Oh, my husband's saying, what about the hot chocolate? Oh my Th that, <laughs> that was actually Ron Corson was said to serve them hot chocolate. I think we've served them at Miami. We actually served them chicken noodle soup really like the broth the broth where because it's hot in miami oh it was when we would go like because we traveled to Pittsburgh like Pittsburgh, and boston yeah. college yeah yeah. yeah yeah so we would have we would have chicken um the broth you know for them and it was hot but the only ones that drank the hot stuff were the guys that were not playing I was gonna say the I'm guys sure the rest of them didn't want it yeah yeah the guys that were playing didn't really want that they they but Mark didn't let that last long he's like no no <laughs> we're not having that well especially because <laughs> I'm sure not many of them were actually drinking it or eating it right right no but everybody on the sidelines all the because you know there's a ton of people that aren't playing or coaches on the sideline they loved it Did they, they kept us busy <laughs> Pouring out the hot chocolate. I, I yeah. bet. D were there people that started to recognize you and know who you were? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Was it because yeah, of the water girl sure. thing? Uh, probably. I'm, sh I'm sure it was because um, I, at, when I first did the water girl, I didn't want anybody to know. Yeah. 
and I what we weren't going to tell anybody that was the we just weren't Claude so Felton you, and did you just you know wear a hat and sunglasses and hope that no one figured out who you were yeah that I mean they would people knew who I was if I was with Mark but if right. I was by myself they didn't always know who, they didn't they, especially in Miami, they didn't have a clue who I was unless I said my name. You know, if you have to say your last name, then, they know. then it kind of sticks out. But um, so I actually made it through all the way to the Florida game the first season I did it. And then my, my brother-in-law, Mark's sister's husband, was the chaplain, Chappie. And we were on the sideline before the game and he was talking to me. And then he, he left to go talk to somebody else. I didn't know who, but I forgot to tell him something. I turned around to tell him something. I saw him doing his uh, thumb over his shoulder. Like his back was to me, but his yeah. thumb was pointing at me. And it was the AJC guys. Oh, no. And I, and I turned right back around. Oh, no. Sure enough, <laughs> on Monday morning, Claude Felton goes, well, what do you want to do? Oh, they gosh. know you, they know you're the water girl. What do you want to do? And I was like, well, just whatever. I'm like, if you <laughs> if you try to ignore it, then sometimes it becomes a bigger deal. Sure. So I was just like, okay, let's just okay, let's, let's just whatever. About it. I don't care. Yeah. So, That's anyways, hilarious. but I was trying to keep it a secret. I wasn't trying to. You, I you mean, know, you make did it, it for a while. You, you yeah, to- not that long. <laughs> <laughs> Probably you were hoping a little bit longer, but you know. Yes. Journalists yes. can be sneaky that way. That's right. Here's your drinks. Have a supersonic day. Nick, in the morning, you don't even you don't even speak full words, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, hey, Nick, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> All right. I don't look forward to any other drink like I do my morning drink. Sonic's Morning Drink Stop. Large drinks for 99 cents and large specialty drinks for $1.49 before 10 a.m. For contactless ordering and payment, Order ahead in the Sonic app. Tax not included. See menu for details for a limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Mobile ordering available only at select locations. You know, one of the things that I really wanted to talk to you about that, you know, you and Mark did really, I don't want to say keep a secret, but you guys kind of kept it to yourselves um, for a long time, is you guys did adopt two of your children and you added to your family. And I saw some of the stories that you've done and I think it's so beautiful and amazing and incredible. where did that idea come from to adopt after you had had your two boys? So we had to use Clomid to have both John and David. And we had decided after David not to do that anymore. Uh, Mark comes from a family of five and I come from a family of four. So we just always thought we would like, you know, more children. Uh, and his father um, had foster kids in their home. So we were kind of thinking, well, maybe we'll, you know, once our boys are older, maybe that's what we'll do. We'll foster some children. But, um, my brother and his wife were not able to have children, um, with him. She had one previously who my brother adopted and anyways, but, um, so they were looking into adopting and in our church, there was a lady who had gone to the Ukraine and adopted. So I hooked my sister-in-law up with her, my sister-in-law went. So when you have somebody in your family that goes, you know, and is looking into it, it becomes more talked about. And at the same time, along with that, um, our small group was studying and we were going over the book of James and in James chapter one, verse 27, it talks about taking care of the orphans and the widows and then our pastor at church, I think, and all this is happening while she's in the Ukraine. Wow. And then our pastor at church, um, you know, talked about it in his sermon. And so we're just, Mark and I are kind of like looking at each other going, well, well, maybe we'll, we didn't know anything. We were so naive. Yeah. And um, we're like, well, maybe, maybe we'll do it too. So, you know, we just started praying about it and kind of started walking through the process. And it took about six months for the whole process on this end to happen before we went over and um, got Zach and Anya. That's so cool. And this was all, at what point in the year was this all happening for you guys? So my sister-in-law was over in Ukraine, like November, December. So right around, you know, towards the end of the season. Um, So 
that's when all this was taking place. I don't think we actually started the process until after the new year. That would have been in, because we adopted them in 99, so it would have been the 98 season. And I don't, I, I don't remember what we did. But that's when we got Zach and Anya was 99. And that's when we won this, the national championship against Virginia Tech. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That was a so Zach, year. yeah, it was a great year. It was a blur because 10 I days bet. after dropping down, I mean, we got, we arrived in um, Tallahassee the first day of two a days. Wow. I know. So it was a blur because I was trying to establish the fact that Mark was their daddy, <laughs> you know, so oh we would, we would go up to the, the football office a lot during that time, but they were young, having four little ones. I mean, David's only 18 months older than Zach. And then Anya's nine months younger than Zach. And then, but then there's like four and a half years between John and David. So John was kind of like, the older oldest. but the, yeah. yeah but the other three were kind of like real close together it was like a lot but Zach broke his femur 11 days after getting to America no way so on yeah, top he, of two a days trying to establish that Mark is now their dad you're having yeah. a baby basically with a broken femur and two a days in a new school and yeah oh it's crazy crazy how did, you, how did you manage all of that only by the grace of God. So he is, he is, he is what has gotten me through it all. That's for sure. Oh my gosh. So. Were there, I, I'm sure there were days that you were just ready to pull your hair out thinking, have we, have we done too much? I mean, what, what yeah. is going on in our life right now? What were we thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, but I'm sure it, obviously yeah. it's all worth it and it's amazing. Yeah. But how was it just trying to you know, like you said, you're, it's two a day. So he's, he's really not home for people that don't know what that means. It explained two a days. Well, two, it's a lot different nowadays. I don't think they even have two a days anymore. It depends on where you are. It depends okay. on where you are. It's okay. like you said, things change everywhere every day. Yeah, right. <laughs> so back then they would, they would practice for like two weeks and they would have two practices every day. So they were basically gone. They were you know, at the office by, well, Coach Bowden liked the dads to either have breakfast or something with the kids. So, you know, they were, they had to be at the office at eight. So, but kids, when they're young, they get up early anyway. So that's not a problem. But, um, so they'd have to be at the office by eight or eight 30 and then they wouldn't come home until 11 or 12 or one at night. So once he left, he was gone but we would try to, we would try to go over there either for lunch or for dinner um, every day and, and, and run around and see him, even if it was just for 20 minutes. And with new kids. Yeah. With new kids. Wow. They loved it though. I bet. They, they got a lot of attention because then they had the players seeing them, the other coaches, they were like, you know, everybody was excited about Zach and Anya. So, you know, it was kind of, they, they, I don't know if it was good for them actually, but they thrived on it. <laughs> We're going to say that it was. I think it yeah, was. Right. I, I think getting thrown into the situation too is probably the best thing, right? I mean, because all of a sudden right. you're like, look, this is us full speed. This is what you're going to get. That's right. That's right. It's a blur. All that, at that time right there, it's like the kids could tell me something happened and I'd be like, really? <laughs> you did? Not, I told you that already, mom. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> How old were they when all that was happening? You said national championship, then 10 days later, all of this stuff was happening. I mean, how old were they when all of this was happening? Well, so no, the, well, the national championship was at the end of that first season. So we got home like August the 2nd okay. of 99. That's when we got home with Zach and Anya. Oh, so they were there for the national championship. Yes, they were there for the whole season. Well, dang, you guys spoiled them right off the bat. Right off the bat, right? <laughs> this is what it's about. Okay. We win national championships every year. <laughs> all the time, all the time, all the time. So, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, you know, at it, when we were at FSU, it seemed like we played for it, you know, a lot. Sure. There yeah. as well. So for sure. Back in those days. So we we did – We I was spoiled because, I mean – 
we he was there 15 years and 14 of those years we were in the top five yeah i mean One, two national championships we played for it almost every year it seemed like so and the biggest games was between us and miami but we had to play miami and florida so i mean there were some it was it was some good times we had some good times i bet i mean things are obviously a lot more fun when you're winning that's for sure right everybody can sure. attest to that um right. you know and you you also spent 15 years in Athens and for you guys to spend 15 years at a place back to back is a luxury these days. It doesn't happen anymore. Right. And you know, a lot of good times in Athens, I'm sure you can say. Yes. Um, oh yes. But in that, in that 15th year when things were going the way that they did and, you know, only lost three games that year and still he got put out of a job, which as yeah. you know, the business is not forgiving oftentimes. Right. Um, how difficult was that year for you guys at the end of everything and knowing that, you know, you've kind of been through this before, you close the door to 15 years to something, but maybe when you weren't quite ready to leave, was, was that hard on your family? Oh yeah. Well, our, our kids especially still think of Athens as home. Um, cause that's where they were raised. Sure. So, and you know, the thing about Athens, one thing, when we first took the job, there were people that were saying we were crazy to take the job. Really? And I was, yeah. And I was like, I remember looking at them saying, okay, so, well, coach Dooley was the athletic director, but he was still there. I said, Ray Goff still lives there and coach Don and he stuck around. I think he may even still live there. And I was like, so it can't be that bad. So you know, the, people in, the people in Georgia are what make the difference for Georgia. So, um, you know, we, we loved our time in Athens. No, we, we were sad. I mean, we'd still be there yeah. <laughs> if we, if we could, if we could have just won a national dadgum championship <laughs> somewhere in there, you know, maybe we'd still be there, but no, I, I like <laughs> Kirby. Kirby's doing a great job. I'm happy for him, but, um, but we still go to our kids live there. Our grandbabies live there. So we, we head to Athens quite often, at least once a month. So is it, does that feel like home for you or is it kind of a split between Tallahassee and, and Athens? So that's why Destin is like the best. Well, because I get to sit there and look at God's big ocean. <laughs> that helps and too. That is incredible. <laughs> but Tallahassee is only two and a half hours away. Yeah. And then, and then Athens is six hours. So it's a great place. Great middle place. Yeah. I think that's yeah. And then our other, we have one son that's in Nashville. Okay. And he's six and a half. And then we have one son in Orlando and he's about six and a half. So it's not, we're, <clears throat> we're pretty good. And they like to come to the beach. Of course. Who doesn't? Right? I'm from Florida. So, I don't know if you knew that, but I, I'm yeah. from, oh, I'm from the West Palm beach area. So I get it. I am a Florida girl. I love being <laughs> by the water. So right? what, what kid wouldn't want to visit grandma and grandpa and mom and dad at the beach? I get it. Right. Right. It's so fun. <laughs> so, um, you know, you said that Athens is, is kind of like home. What, what was your best, this is going to be hard because you spent 15 years there, but what was, I guess your most cherished memory, or you can say maybe your favorite year that you guys spent there. Oh, I know. And that is hard. 15 years. Cause they were, yeah. Cause well, cause it was, so, I mean, it was obviously fun to win the, um, the SEC championships were fun, but there were so many games that were fun. I mean, that Florida game that they, you know, all went down and got on the goal line. Yep. The blackout game was so fun. I remember when, uh, Aaron and Aaron Murray and Mettenberger. Yeah, they played LSU. We played LSU and we killed them. <laughs> oh, we maybe didn't kill them, but it was a great game. I mean, both <laughs> the boys had a great game, so it was fun. Yeah. You know, um, you know, there were just so many fun games. I remember, I mean, I remember beating Alabama at Alabama in the old stadium. Yeah, it was an overtime game and Mikey Henderson. I mean, I just there's so many. I don't know. They get obviously the games were fun. <clears throat> I enjoyed the games. I enjoyed our staff. I enjoyed our you know all the people that worked for us over the years. So that was always fun. 
I don't know. I don't know that one year in particular sticks out over the others. It's just like games here and there. You also got a taste of SEC fans and what that's like. Obviously, that was really different, right? Oh, they're – well, they're – they – love their team they're passionate they love their school they're very passionate and they you know it's it's part of who they are and sure. so they they enjoy that and they cheer for that but I never I never um I never had anybody be ugly to me ever Good. even if even if we you know lost or whatever I'm thankful I don't you know but yeah nobody ever and just that time, one guy forever ago about the fumble yeah. with the football. That's the one. Yeah, but he didn't know who I was. He just <laughs> yeah, was, the he was just yelling. But um, <laughs> and then when we were at Miami and I was a water girl and we were at Boston College. <laughs> it was our it was our last year there, and we were losing to Boston College, and it was the Miami fans were like they didn't know it was me. Oh no. But they're yelling like horrible things. And our, our radio guy, they're right there behind us. And I don't even turn around. I don't acknowledge them. I don't, I just don't, I'm not going to engage them. I'm not, you can't argue with them. Yep. But our radio guy turned around and started, he'd had enough. And oh. he started like saying stuff to him. And I finally had to just go over and turn him around and just say, it doesn't matter. Just, it doesn't matter. Just leave him alone. So, but that's the, probably the worst and they didn't they weren't saying it directly was the to Miami me. Fans. I, I'm not and that shocked been, by that I guess because I grew up yeah. around that I, I know what they're yeah. like and Miami yeah. fans can be pretty rough um yeah that's funny that that's hilarious yeah. yeah so is there any I mean now that coach Rick is retired now he's an, an analyst on ACC network you guys aren't in the coaching game anymore do you miss it at all me yeah no <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I love that answer. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the cool thing is, is that like last year with the ACC network, because yeah. Clemson, we got to go to the playoff games and then we got to go to the national championship. So we got to go and we got to, I got to see David Pollock, oh, you know, and hang amazing. out in between. Yeah. And then, okay. um, and Maria, we got to see Maria Taylor. Yeah. So, I was like, wait, I wasn't you, there. Now I know. <laughs> yeah, right. I gotcha. Right. I gotcha. Yeah. So it was kind of fun. And I didn't, I mean, I, I picked who I wanted to win the game, but it's not like I really, I didn't really care. I mean, you yeah. know what I mean? I was, I was, yeah, yeah. I felt bad for the loser and I felt good for the winner. So it was great. <laughs> it was just beautiful. Not, I love it. You were not involved. Your life is not, not involved. Affected. I love it. That's right. So, so now what, we have, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, now we have a nephew at LSU. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so that'll be, you know, it's different because it's not my child, but it is, you know, Mark's sister's child. So it's, that'll be, we're LSU fans now. Do you ever think you would say that? That's weird. No, that is, it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's still kind of weird. I'm really, it is interesting on this side of it because yeah. it's not a staff. It's not coaching. I am a Max Johnson fan. Okay. There you go. And I'll wear purple and yellow, but I'm a Max Johnson fan. <laughs> but, but yeah, let's just draw the line. You're not an LSU fan. You're yeah, your, you not really. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, so now that you guys are out of it, was there uh, a moment that Mark came over to you and said, this is it for me. I'm done. This is, this is the end of the road. What was that conversation like? Um, so it actually happened rather quickly, but I could tell his, um, like I have a picture of like our granddaughters would spend the night with us once a week in Miami. And in the morning before he left, he'd, they would sit on his lap and watch, you know, whatever it was, um, puppy pound, pound puppies or something. Anyways, <laughs> he, he is, this is in December and I think the season is over and he's sitting there with them in his lap and I'm taking a picture and his, his there was like, his eyes were deadpan and I was kind of like, all right, something's got to give. So you know, I don't know what's going on, but his, you know, health, 
I just think he, when he, when he should have taken a break after Georgia, because he was getting tired at Georgia. Yeah. He should have taken a break, but he didn't. And he went to Miami and we didn't have any kids in the house. So he could go, go, go at Miami. And he, he threw him, they built that indoor facility and coaches offices and they didn't do anything without Mark's opinion or he would walk the yard with the, the guy they became great friends. I forgot his name. That's terrible. Huh? Carlos. Carlos yes. They became great friends because he would walk the yard with Carlos every day, but he raising money for that, putting the energy in that while he was coaching, he was the head coach. He was calling plays. Yeah. He was, he was you know, just, it was, it became too much and he did not, he did not rest. He did not take care of himself. He didn't eat right. He didn't rest. He just, and it, and it took a toll on him. I mean, you've, you've, these guys have got to take care of themselves, but you can't as a coach's wife, make them do that. That has to come from them. They have to choose to take care of themselves. And if they don't, then at some point you're going to have a heart attack. Yeah. Yeah, it catches up to you. I mean, and, and you know, you know how important health is. You're a cancer survivor. You went through all of that yourself. He still didn't listen to you even after all of that? No, but I think he finally is now. Okay, good. He's starting to drink a lot of water and eat healthy. Yeah. I think the beach helps all of that too, right? I feel like (laughs) the beach makes you want to be a healthy person. I don't know. I've always felt that way. It's true. It's true. Yes. Because you, they, you know, well, I don't wear what what a lot of these people wear down here but (laughs) you know you're on the beach you're in the sun you're getting your vitamin d yeah you don't yeah you're trying not to be the biggest person on the beach (laughs) that too that helps too just try not to do that but now you guys are relaxing life is a lot more chill i guess these days for you guys and uh are you loving life at the moment i know that 2020 has been a little rough but you know you guys are you're finally relaxing. Yes. I mean, I'm loving it. I think he's loving it. I mean, he, he does need to have something to do. So I'm thankful for the ACC. Sure. And he, he does speak. Um, so, and he's writing a book, so he is staying pretty busy, but, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I, I love, this is my, well, every season because having the kids and everything was fun too. I loved that, but I love being Lolly, the grandmother, and Lolly, I love that's so cute. Yeah. Well, oh. he was supposed to be Pop. Oh, we could what be Lolly. And oh, Pop. Lollipop! That's so cute. What happened? He wanted Uh-oh. to be Poopaw. 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 Yeah, he's Poopaw. Like, you guys could have been Lollipop. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> Missed he's opportunity. Saying- he was Poopaw, and then they were trying to call me Moomaw. Oh, no. And I just looked at my son, and I said, Lolly. okay, you know where your bread is buttered? You know who <laughs> takes care of you? Do not call me Moomaw. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. Said, so okay, then it was Lolly. Okay, Lolly. Yes. There you go. There you go. So I, I know who the boss in the house is. That would be you, Catherine. Lolly. I love Lolly. That's so cute. My, my yeah. sister had a baby earlier this year, like right at the height of the pandemic. My niece was born oh, wow. in March. Um, oh, wow. So I know how much fun it is to have new babies in the house. It's, it's the best. Even though they don't live close to me, I can pretend. Oh. But you yeah. can pretend. I FaceTime can pretend. is great. FaceTime is great. You know, it, what's really weird is she knows my face because of FaceTime. And so when I went I and it. I, we, my mom and I drove to Chicago, not to get too far off the rails, but we yeah. drove to Chicago and she actually knew who I was because of FaceTime, which is wild. Wow. That yeah, is she crazy. was smiling and she got it and she understood. And if she, if we're FaceTiming and my sister will turn the camera and it's on me, she knows. So yes, oh, FaceTime is sweet. a beautiful thing. It's great. Yes, yes. All right, the last okay. thing, I could talk to you all day, honestly, because I have 6,000 questions to ask you, but yeah. I, I'm going to ask you one more and then I'll okay. let you go and get back to the beach okay. and I'm very jealous. Um, okay. What was the greatest piece of advice that anyone ever gave you, whether it was Coach Bowden's wife or someone that had been in it for a while, like, like you have been, what was the greatest piece of advice that you got and you took and you ran with and you were glad that you did? Oh man. 
<laughs> I'm just asking you to reflect on so many things and I'm so sorry. That's it. No, you're good. You're good. No, it's good <laughs> to reflect. It's good to think about it. Um, I did, I did love Miss Anne. I can't, I can't think of anything in particular. What's the greatest piece of advice as, you would give? Well, I think, I think the greatest thing you can do is, um, is build your relationship with Jesus bottom line, because he makes the difference. He's in that relationship right there. That's the one you need to get through anything in life. So if you, if you are in the word and you're with him and you're trying to obey him and follow him, I think that that's, you know, no matter what life brings at you, he's going to help you through it. I love that. I think that's yeah. great. <laughs> and I think that that is a great way to end it. Catherine, I could, like I said, I could talk to you all day, but I am just so grateful that you wanted to have this conversation. It's so much fun because for me, I love to learn about different people. That's why I do what I do. But coaches' wives are also different in so many yes. awesome ways. And so yes. I'm just, I'm really excited you got the ball rolling. We have a couple other guests yes. lined up that I'm really excited about. So oh, I'm just so excited and so grateful that you decided that you wanted to do this. So thank you. Well, thank you for having me. And I'm excited that football has you. That's awesome. So oh, thank you. That's so sweet. And I'm excited yeah. that you guys get to watch now and you don't have, you yeah. can relax for the first time in <laughs> over 30 years. <laughs>